This is the Night Force Action Report from HorribleNight.com for October 1st, 2013. Also a Tuesday, apparently. Yeah, I totally forgot it was October until right now. So uh, <laughs> I'm your attentive host, uh, Justin Lacey, and joined tonight by one Aaron McNeil. What's up, Aaron? I'm a podcaster on the edge. You're about to lose it? Is this it? <laughs> I'm about to lose This is my last day. I got like, are you a new rookie cop. Are you like 80s action movie on the edge, or are you like Linkin Park on the edge? Uh, a mixture of both. Okay. If, if Linkin Park, because all Linkin Park does now is make music for movies, right? Transformers and stuff. Sure. That's all they do. Yeah, yeah. So, I forgot those those <laughs> worlds have kind of uh, run into one another. But um, they're the soundtrack of my uh, cop movie. <laughs> we'll eventually get to video games tonight. But um, uh, what have you? What have you been up to outside of the gaming world? I pretty much sat down and forced myself to catch up on Breaking Bad in time for the season finale. How much? How much of a binge was it? How many episodes were we talking? It it was like four or five. Okay, yeah. I first I had to catch up on Netflix, and then I was recording them on DVR, and I had to catch up on that. And I got to the point where I had the butterflies. I had the the blue meth butterflies. <laughs> I was like, How is this show going to hit balls. me? Yeah, I was tripping balls. How is it going to hit me in the gut? come last Sunday, and I was out of town. I was kind of freaking out. I was like, I don't want to get on the internet and be spoiled, oh, yeah. but I got back in time to watch it, and I don't know if it's because I'm just, I don't know, I'm pretty emotional about my TV shows, Sure. but when we got to the end of that, that last episode, my, my body hurt. Like, I was just, like, <laughs> just, upset. You're upset, or was I'm it, like, like it's, tension, or, or... It was, it was like, a good upset. I'm like, it's over, but I'm, I'm upset it's over. Yeah, I get that. Like, I wanted to start crying. I wanted to, like, go to counseling and but, talk through my problems. I don't know. A- after some finales that I've been through, and we won't, we won't spoil this, so everybody, <laughs> everybody can calm I, down. Uh, um, not sure if I know what you're referring to, but maybe I do. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, compared to just other finales of shows, like this was okay. just it was just well done it was well executed so yeah um, that's pretty much my takeaway of it they uh it was well crafted and it now makes breaking bad like i came around on it this last season like i i i, I, lo- I really like the show um most of the way through it but it just wasn't i didn't feel like i had the fervor that everybody else did um yeah but this last season i don't know like i just saw how they were just kind of tightly wrapping things up and i just really appreciated yeah. it it was just seemed well thought through and i felt like i've been burned by other shows with their finales and their final seasons and um, i just thought this one treated it really well and treated its fans really well and uh, just kind of appreciative of that so really at this point this is one of those shows where I can't recommend highly enough to just binge watch the whole thing because it, it just go it, I look forward to that. It's like just coming back to it because a, a lot of shows are starting to end, end, but like there's a few of my shows now that have drug on for probably three or four seasons too long. And um, well, you could argue Breaking Bad probably could have ended last season. Um, they did they did a good job with where they wrapped it up. So and there's not very many shows you can say that about. Yeah, I I think it ended perfectly in time with like living out its you know, just living out its life. The fact that I think show, more shows definitely should end when people are like on top of it. Like this is a great show and if you can wrap it up and end it while everyone's still excited about it rather than lingering on and on hoping to drain more, you know, viewers. I think you, people should just nail in the coffin, you know, while the iron's hot. Just yep. to say a bunch of random Yes, Metal. cliches, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I loved it. Yes. Um, like, I don't think people will talk about that last episode as something that's fantastic. I don't think it's like the Probably standout not, episode yeah. that you, you know, you are going to point people to, but it, I'm just, yeah. As, as far as endings go, good stuff. Yeah, it's it's the bow on the $200 full season barrel cased package that they, they tried to sell you. During that last episode, <laughs> that was the funniest part of the entire thing. Is when they're like, "You like Breaking Bad? Well, here's a two hundred dollar pre order on Amazon. Come all the disc in a barrel." Oh shit! I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that and I was like, "Oh my god, I, I want it!" But that thing's gonna be expensive. They didn't tell you the price, but I looked it up. It's like two hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, I basically had an internet shutdown um, while the show was up because I watched it the next day on Amazon. Um, so. 
But once that kind of came in, I actually watched it on my lunch break. So it was, uh, I've survived the, the spoilers. So actually people were okay <laughs> for, uh, for my list. I've had shows spoiled yeah. by my friends. They were, they were well behaved. Um, people, yeah, people were very polite about it. Uh, the Entertainment Week Entertainment Weekly uh, Twitter account was live tweeting it in yeah. the, such the dumb way oh. that all they were doing was saying what was happening. <laughs> so if Walt said, you know, my shoelace is untied, they literally tweeted, Walt just said my shoelace is untied, hashtag Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, That's this is weird. the stupidest thing I've ever yeah. seen. Um, so are you watching are you watching any other shows? What are you doing as after this one's over? Like I don't know what your uh, quota looks TV's like. TV's right over. TV, I, I kicked a hole in my TV as soon as Breaking Bad was over. How'd your PlayStation 3 no, feel about that? Or your uh, Xbox? I don't know. It, but I can play Wii U. I don't need a TV for that. <laughs> That's true. That is true. I was actually <laughs> reading... on the game. I was reading about some uh, journalists uh, that they basically plug their Wii U into whatever outlet is closest to them. Like, they'll play games as yeah. they're like working in the kitchen or... Um, boarding a plane or something like that. It cracks me up how, how that works. I'm taking mine to the bathroom. <laughs> what else is going on? Uh, not a whole lot, except for my company had a game night last Friday, so I stayed late at work intentionally to play <laughs> games. And we thought we were going to play video games. Like Someone's like, I'm going to bring an Xbox, I have Call of Duty. And I'm like, oh, I guess we'll sit around playing Call of Duty. We played a board, kind of kind of a board game, more of a card game. We played a card game. Okay. And that card game is called Munchkin. I have never heard of it or played it before. But it's like a role-playing game with cards where you have a class and a race, and you fight monsters, and the first to reach level 10 wins. And you get, like, a bunch of curse cards, and you can play them at any time on any other player. So it's like a weird kind of form alliances, but also screw everyone over because you want to win. Hmm. kind of thing it was a fun game i was like a human thief i could escape most battles if i need to run away and at one point a guy uh played down a monster card so he, he was fighting a lawyer it's like kind of, it's a goofy game so like the monsters are weird and so he's like i'm gonna fight this level six war a uh, lawyer this will be easy for me and i'm like well how do you like it when i do this and i had a card that allowed me to play another monster on top of his card so i gave him like three thousand plus orcs to fight all level 10 and then i had an additional card that made the orcs level 20 and i'm like get out of that you son of a bastard <laughs> and uh it was pretty funny and so i like, got people can jump in why is it called munchkin i have no idea okay. that's a great question never asked but it was a, it's a really fun it was a really fun game i didn't win but it it was interesting to learn and the, just the way we got into our characters and actually deciding whether to help each other or hurt each other. It it was something that I was glad I went to and that we weren't just sitting around playing games since that's what I do most of my life is <laughs> just play video games. But playing a card game I never played before. Cool. Now I get why people go to conventions and yeah. get tabletop stuff. I guess for Dean said that Will Wheaton did a tabletop video uh, about. Munchkin. So, oh, nice. Um, I might want to see that just to see if we were even playing it right. We kept referring back to the rules, and we weren't sure what we were doing. But yeah, um, I guess I think I've said this before when I was talking around uh, Gen Con, but just the social activity around a tabletop game is totally different than um, even playing local multiplayer of a video game, and it's 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 definitely definitely refreshing. It's 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 just another. I always forget that that's a thing to do because. I default to video games. It's like, what do you want to play? I won't, yeah. you know, what's the new game? But um, definitely get a healthy dosage of some board game, card games, uh, tabletop games in there when you can. Yeah. <clears throat> definitely good. We also played Cards Against Humanity, and that yeah. was as depraved as I hoped it would be. Some people had never played that game before. Oh, that, was, that wasn't your first time, was it? It was not my first okay. time. I yeah. have, like, yeah. all, I think I have all the sets. I'm pretty current, I guess, on the official cards, but... They're we had, uh, I was going to say they're overdue for an expansion, yeah. it feels like. I, I, it kind of feels like it. I think the last one was like a Christmas uh, edition. That's the last one I got anyway. No, they had one. I, I haven't paid much. Yeah, they had one after There was Christmas. one after that? Yep. Okay, so I don't have that one, I guess. Um, but they, they have the big black I, box coming the out. Original. The big black box? Yeah, so you can finally hold all your expansions. So 
Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, I love that game. I love that game. More. It's a it's a really great game. People playing that for the first time were like giggling at their cards before like the play it actually yep. happens. So like they yep. pick up a new card, they're like, oh my god. <laughs> there's that moment and then there's the the moment after everybody plays them and they like all the cards are on the table, the guy whose turn it is hasn't read them yet, but so yeah. everybody is like, you know, grabbing their next card and they add that oh so! I should if if only I had that card for this round. Like that reaction. I said that. I say that every time I play. Yeah, yeah. I, it happens to like half the crowd every time. It's like, oh, I got the perfect card. But oh man, yeah. There's gotta be a way. There, I think I need to find ways to change the rules where you could apply that because it's just all too common and it would make the game more fun if you could. You that like would be a, a great. You have like a second two. Rule. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I actually played that game by the rules for the first time, um, and it it proved to be fun. Usually we play it just, we don't try to do it competitively, we just go. Yeah. And <clears throat> this time we, you know, you played till somebody got five black cards or whatever, and then you got to reset your deck, and that actually kind of kept it more fresh than what we had we had been doing, so. Okay. Um, anyway. Yeah, I usually play until someone gets a certain number. Mm. Uh, the first thing that we did that I had never done before, and she said this was, a, I guess, part of some rule set, is that you have to pick three cards from your hand after someone wins and read them aloud dramatically like a haiku. <laughs> and so that was pretty funny when uh, another co-worker got, like, Kanye West dying hope. <laughs> the way she just read that. Everyone at the table like I like started clapping. Clapping. Like, it was so <laughs> single. Yeah, it was like so beautiful. Single and yet tears. Also very disturbing. Yeah, we we're all like Kanye West should die essentially. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's kind of kind of dark, but it was so funny. Yeah, that's what the game's for. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good so, stuff. So I was sick last week. That was that was a lot of fun. Um, one interesting thing I found. I was thinking about this. That um, when I when I. You know, when you grew up and you'd get sick and you'd stay home from school, like that was like video game marathon day for me. Um, when I get yes. sick as an adult, I don't want anything to do with video games. They're too, they're too loud and flashy and colorful. <laughs> Just want to sleep. Um, so I was out of commission there for a couple days, but did rebound in time uh, to make a trip to Cedar Point this weekend uh, with uh, some of my coworkers from from the day job. And uh, so we were there all day Saturday. So I grew up, um, I'm a huge roller coaster fan. I grew up going to Kings Island in Cincinnati um, probably nice. w- once a year um, for probably a dozen years. But it had, it had been uh, five, five or so years since I've been to Cedar Point, and they'd added three or four roller coasters. So, uh, But I'd never been on a weekend. So right now they've got this whole... Um, as falls setting in, they have these hollow weekends things where they keep the park open until midnight on the weekends and they're not really open during the week. And surprisingly, okay. not all, all that many people go. So it was like strange. The longest line we ha- we were in was 90 minutes long. And that was for some of the bigger rides. Most of them were 45 minutes. And, uh, so we got to pound through a ton of roller coasters and that park's so big, you can't get through all of their big rides in, in one day. So um, one thing I did notice though is I, I still don't understand this. When I'm a big people watcher, and uh, especially totally when you're it. especially when you're standing in line, why are people so miserable at amusement parks? <laughs> it it really is the strangest thing that so many people they're pay money, angry. they pay their money. Yeah, they get inside, they get past the gate. They're where all the fun is, and so many people look like they have just. This is the Entered worst. A, a new circle of hell. I mean, there's the. I mean, it's. I. I get the. You know, the broken family at 8 p.m. at the end of the day. They brought the little kids and everybody's worn out and crying. Like those people. Yeah. You're. I understand your pain. Like you were allowed they to. It. Yeah. But like, I don't know the. You know the twenty somethings the, the the high schoolers that are just there with their friends. They just. They still have this. These scowls on their faces the entire time. Like I get. You know, waiting in line's not fun. But that's part of the thing. Like, you can't, yeah. I don't get, there's no reason to go to an amusement park and be upset about a line. Because, especially because those lines weren't very long, considering. So, um, but I did have two Crazy. awesome experiences. Uh, they're two newest rides. Um, first of all, Gatekeeper is the best new ride I've ever, 
ever ridden. It is like my favorite new roller coaster. Um, it had like these bucket seats and this, the way they strapped you in, it was like, I said the, the, uh, the roller coaster was hugging me with like this chest piece that it put over me. And I, I just felt, <laughs> I just felt so secure, but I could also like move freely and the, the, the ride. So, so warm and safe. It was, cause the, el- the roller coaster was giving me a hug and, um, it was like one of the suspended roller coasters. So you, it's supposed to be kind of like you're flying cause the whole thing looks like an eagle, but like. It gets to the top of the hill, and it just slowly twists the track, so you just go upside down, like, right off the oh, bat. It's, I called it the big fuck you, because it's, like, <laughs> it's not about, like, you know, having a ton of momentum and, and letting, you know, centripetal force, like, push you in your seat. No, they're just going to flip you upside down, so you're just totally relying <laughs> on the safety of the coaster, and then it got, it was just kind of no holds barred from there. So that one was awesome, and then um, I'll give a big shout out to... Their other new ride, I think from like two years ago, is called Maverick. This is like a just a really fast, twisty roller coaster. Supposed to be like riding a bunky bucking bronco, but we um, the line for this one was pretty long throughout the day, and we got there right at the end of the day, and it was completely dark, and we hadn't even really paid attention to the ride. None of us had been on it, mm. and so we're riding this ride in the dark that we can't even see what's coming. We don't know what to expect, and it was just. It was insane. It was, it was, if you could, if you could ever, anytime you <laughs> ride a roller coaster for the very first time, I wish you could ride it in the dark without ever having seen any of it. And then it have a big, um, like 10 second tunnel in the middle of it where it's completely pitch black. So it was, uh, it was, it was intense, but it was, it was a lot of fun. I wish I, I, it had been too long since I've been to, uh, a amusement park. So Cedar Point's one of the best. Like the the best names ever. I don't know. Like whoever names a roller coaster should start naming cars. <laughs> anything in general. They um. Like I would buy a Maverick. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they have some they have some good ones. The Millennium Force uh, is still really awesome, and then uh, Top Thrill Dragster is one of their newer ones that shoots you from zero to <laughs> 120 in like four seconds, and it's ridiculous but um, too fast. when we were reading all about the rides we were standing in line and just like this is so and so's 121st roller coaster I was like how in the world are there that many roller coasters in the world for you to work on <laughs> so um, do you like get stamps I wonder if they have like a book like a coin collectors or whatever like you just stamp that I've written this roller coaster I think there's like achievements yeah there should, there <laughs> should real be real life achievements I would, I would go after those chivos so I have no idea how many roller coasters I've been on. I've been on some. I don't keep track. I'm no, too no, busy no. Trying to throw no up. It was the guys like it was either like, oh, like his 60th or his 120th or something ridiculous, some really high number. It was okay. his, that he built, like or designed. That he built, okay. Or at least designed. Maybe it was designed because I'm sure some of them don't get built. <laughs> but like, I'm like, how many roller coasters are there in the world? I don't. I don't. Yeah, that's, that's even funnier to me then. I would I just would, in, like this guy sitting around thinking of how can I twist this track? Yeah, what the, such a way? I mean, I Does feel he always like, start with like an oval. <laughs> yeah. No ovals. That's too. That's too. That's overdone. No. Um. <laughs> and I was thinking like, what would I want to meet a roller coaster engineer? Like, you know, they started off doing something else. Like whether they're like designing so. supercars or space shuttles or whatever they're doing but at some point they just like hit their peak and they're like I'm gonna go have some fun I'm gonna make roller coasters the rest of my life cause I don't know it just it that seems like an odd profession it yeah. really does I hate to be responsible knowing I put 120 yeah. whatever roller coasters on the planet and then one of them caused people to die or something I just yeah. didn't know oh, this one killed people this one killed people but this yeah. one's safe not yet yeah, there was a an accident. Um, I want to say three or four months ago down in Texas. And man, I read all about that, and then I went down this Wikipedia dark hole of reading about all roller coaster accidents. So that went through yeah. my head several times this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it did. Yeah, wow. destination three. I was like, I know too much. <laughs> all right. Um, real real quick question: Have you ever played a roller coaster tycoon? I have. I've never played it. Is it fun? It, that it you got to be in the mood for it. I mean, I think with most tycoon or sim kind of games, you got to be in the mood yeah. for just going through all that all that shit just to get to like a good point. Is it always look it takes like, a while? 
Yeah, it always looked like an amusement park tycoon, and it was like I'd rather I just wanted yeah. to design the coasters themselves. There was an old I school be- PC game called Coaster that I had that lets you like write it in 3D or whatever, but it was really oh, that's pretty cool. The graphics sucked because uh, it was so old. But uh, I was just curious. We were talking a lot about that game this weekend, so. I forget which tycoon I played. It was one of the old ones. The graphics in my mind are not that great, but I thought some of the later tycoon games might have actually given you that full like three D. You can you can actually ride the coaster yourself. Mm-hmm. I pretty much would just build a coaster up to code, <laughs> and then I think when it was approved, I would then destroy it in some way, and then oops, everyone is just lined up to basically crash into the ground, yeah. which is a great point. As like, where did I have all the cars? I guess. <laughs> just burning through cars. <laughs> it's not very realistic, I don't think. Not, not at all. I was, I'm a tycoon, I guess. <laughs> all right, I'm on to new releases. Let's see what the hell is coming out this week. Um, seems to be somewhat of a, somewhat of a light week, I think. If I had to pick one as the big release, um, it's probably NBA 2K14, uh, which is out. Oh man! On um, pretty much everything, the PC release is only twenty nine ninety nine, so I don't really understand what's going on there. I don't know what's happening. Um, only reason I'm bringing it up in any capacity, I don't think you're not a big sports game. I can't get into playing okay. a sports game for too long. Okay. Well, this is, I mean, critically, the NBA 2K series has been like the most critically acclaimed of the of the modern sports games, at least. Um, it always gets decent yeah. reviews. But man, they went all all in with LeBron James this year, and I thought this was the and, <laughs> this is the one with like creepy uh, LeBron James in yeah, game like you talking just, to himself. Yeah, you play at like they have a like basically a career mode where you play as him. And if you follow in the NBA at all, like the big drama is at the end of this season, he gets to figure out where he's going after, uh, like what team he signs with. And so they built yeah. a whole like career mode based around you get to make that decision for him and play out the rest of his career to go after all of Michael Jordan's uh, um, records. And, you know, I guess, you know, <laughs> LeBron signed off on this, the NBA signed off on it. LeBron put together the soundtrack for the game. It's just like. It's kind of gross. <laughs> That's just really gnarly. Just LeBron, you're essentially buying like LeBron James the, the Le- game. Yes, like. yeah, but it's but it's which which that would be one thing. But it's like you're buying LeBron James the game, but they're calling it NBA Two K Fourteen. There's <laughs> just something very strange about that. So, uh, you know, you could, I guess you could always get the NBA Live game that comes out later this year. <laughs> I think we'll be broken as fuck. <laughs> Quote me on that one. I'll have some funny glitches in it, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, what else? Um, Wind Waker HD hits uh, retail short stores. The download version's already out. We've talked about that. Oh, and we will be talking about You could about get that, that uh, GameStop or something. It has the little Ganon figurine oh, or something. What? If you got a special edition, that was pretty cool. I'll buy it again. If you're into that. If you're into that thing. I don't know. It's like a limited edition or something. They'll probably have some. <laughs> and... Uh, not much on the 3DS worth talking about. Well, let me double check that other. Not uh, until Atrian Pokemon. Odyssey, Rune Factory 4. Uh, Vita has a game called Die, Die, Die. I don't know anything about it, but that <laughs> name is at least worth picking out. The name is funny considering it's on the Vita. Um, PlayStation 3 has another kind of weird, artsy adventure experience game called Rain. Um, yeah, I read a little bit about that i don't know enough about it but just like it kind of sort of it gave me some um shit the beyond two souls guys what was their other heavy rain heavy Heavy rain heavy rain ico gave me that kind of vibe from some of the previews but it it also fell off the face of the earth as far as marketing goes so who knows how it turned out yeah i don't know i just i looked at uh, polygon's review a little bit and apparently it's about invisible kids running away from monsters and there's rain yeah, you can only see them when it's raining or something. Um, yeah. But it, I don't know, everything I've read about it says, you know, it's good if you like these kind of games. So, um, but I don't, I don't know, it, it's, the PlayStation has weird games like this, and I kind of love it for that, so. Me too. I might check it out at some point. I don't know about right now. The Flashback remake, HD, it's not really, I think it was more of a remake than anything. Um, is now out on PC and PSN this week. Uh, Justin Gifford has a review up 
of that on the site. Um, pro foosball. Oh man, that's what I, I will play a foos. I, will, I love pinball games. Maybe I'll like a foosball game. <laughs> uh, that Fatal, will be interesting. Yeah, Fatal Frame Three: The Tormented PlayStation Two Classic. Um, Extension Ex- Agenda EX is the Xbox Live Arcade release. Don't now you're know. just making stuff up. <laughs> yep. F1 2013. Um, go. It's your racing choice. The Arma Tactics. Don't really know anything about that. Verdian, got anything to say about Arma Tactics? Bank's got the Arma name on it. So, um, yeah, kind of a quiet week actually. Um, and October's gonna yeah. kind of be that way because we're all waiting for uh, the big releases next month. So um, we're so. ramping up. Assassin's Creed Ezio trilogy. Thanks, Ubisoft. <laughs> Um, um, um. I think you just go buy th- used copies of the three games. Yeah. All right. That's it for new releases. Um, Aaron, what have you been playing, sir? I have been playing as a new Wii U owner some Wind Waker HD. As a big fan of Wind Waker, <laughs> and like we were saying earlier, I I'm surprised I forgot so much about this game, but the game is so damn beautiful God. that it's almost like I'm playing it for the first time. It, yeah, I mean, I've been enamored with the HD releases before, but, or re-releases, it, there's just, there's something about this. This is just, it's also, there's just been enough time that you've realized how great of a game that actually was, because it had a lot yeah. of controversy around its art style when it came out, and it kind of yep. clouded my experience, but wow, I've been, I've been floored, but how far are you in? Yeah, I was, I, uh, I've got the. I guess it's, I don't know if there's such thing as a spoilers in that game. Nah, <laughs> so old, nah. but I, I got the master sword, and I'm on my way to I think the two kind of more elemental dungeons. Okay. So I played it quite a bit into it, and I've been sailing around, feeding fish, getting hints, and just <laughs> taking it all in. I mean, because, yeah, another kind of big point about the game was. That, that that overworld and the fact that you're pr- basically si- sailing around on a giant ocean, mm-hmm. and so there's not like a whole bunch of diversity in terms of what you're seeing from you know point A to point B. You're seeing water, <laughs> and the water is either <laughs> choppy or it's smooth. <laughs> and there's some and sort of land- landmark in the distance that is getting closer, yeah, or farther away. <laughs> yeah, it, it's something's happening, but there's a lot of blue, and. I could see some people being. I kind of get why they were like, "Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna care for this." The cell shading in a big old ocean, but I, I really love. I really like Wind Waker and just sailing around. I, I feel like it gives you. It's one of those games that gives me a feeling that other games just never really gave to me in that same way. In that so much emptiness with tiny specks of you know discovery in the distance. Is just so intriguing, and it's just like you feel like you're really adventuring, yeah. Versus just kind of running around from A to B. Let's move the story along. Give me my next, you know, item. Which it does that really well too. I, I even forgot just how quickly it gives you new items. Mm-hmm. It's not always a dungeon based. I'm gonna go into a dungeon. Give me a tool that helps me beat this dungeon. Like sometimes you just get items. And I'm like, holy shit! They're just giving me this and that and this. And there's so much stuff and links so small. And where is he keeping this stuff? But it's a, uh, it's definitely reminding me of why I thought it was such a great game back when I first played it on GameCube. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't played it enough. Like I streamed it twice. I'll keep streaming it after the show tonight, um, just to keep pressing pressing on. But I was, you know, so happy that we could we could play it uh, on the digital release a little bit early. I mean, hell, it sold you on the yeah. system. Like that is. Yep. Uh, that's all that's crazy. <laughs> I that's mean, crazy. I can't <laughs> like insane. I can't recommend the game to like new players or people that haven't played it for the for the price point or as a system seller. But like no. for the prime Nintendo nostal- nostalgia factor, like it, they just they they nailed it. I, I'll be really curious to see how well this thing sells. Yeah, I, that's pretty much the reason I just I couldn't resist the fact that there was a limited edition Wii U mm-hmm. with a special decorated, you know, Zelda decorated gamepad and Wind Waker, one of my favorite games, looking s- just so hot to be weird about <laughs> it, just looking so hot. <laughs> and I'm like, I just I have to get it. I can't pass up on this. If I skip it, 
I'm going to regret it, even if down the line I can just you know buy a regular Wii U if the price drops again. It was like a really appealing sale. I'm like, I just I gotta have this one while it's a thing. I'm alive and I and I want it. You know, <laughs> I got I gotta do this right now, and um, I, I don't regret it. Uh, PF and chat uh, asks if you mind holding up the gamepad. Are you using the gamepad? Uh, I am using the gamepad. It's it's in another room, so I have to get up and actually no, I mean go like grab it right. I bet about uh, when you're playing my holding when you're oh, playing I, Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wanted me to show it off. No, like, no, well, Every- let me go get it. <laughs> uh, I I really like the gamepad. I guess I haven't really talked so much about if I actually like no, the I mean, system itself. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that, but well, like in particular for Zelda, because I've been playing with. The controller. I've been playing with the Pro Controller, so I'm curious what you think of using the gamepad for Wind Waker. Uh, it, that's yeah. I was gonna get to that. I do actually. I do like it using the gamepad to play games on the Wii U, and just having like the map on the screen while I'm playing the game on the TV, and the way it feels when I first picked took it out of the box. I'm like, uh, am I gonna actually like or enjoy holding this thing? I touched it once like months ago in a store just to say I touched the thing, but uh, I've gotten really used to it, and it's it's kind of it's warming. I've warmed up to you, to it. It's like getting to me. I like it. I've I'm I'm playing it as if I've had this system for months. I've <laughs> caught on real fast. I don't think it's a hard thing to get used to. But yeah, it would be interesting to have a controller and say, oh, which one of these do I prefer? But yeah. in terms of how it functions, I am enjoying it. In, in terms of playing Wind Waker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's also nice that, uh, just to, to quickly say, uh, when you switch which items you have equipped, I think before like, you would pause the game and then switch it out, but with the gamepad, like, the game doesn't stop, but I can quickly slide the boomerang into a slot if I need to use that instead, and kind of, the flow just feels nice. It feels better. I don't feel like I'm breaking it up, like, oh, I need to have bombs, let me quickly pause the game. Yeah. I can pause if I want to, but... If I'm standing there and nothing's happening to me, why not just be able to equip an item on the fly? Like you know, you always have to kind of have the uh, the gamepad near you when you're not when you're not using it. Like I've been, like I said, I've been playing with the the pro controller just because I wanted it to feel like what I expected, rather than even adjusting to the gamepad. I'm sure the gamepad's fine, and I might even like it better. But I don't, I don't know. It just sometimes I want the compact controller versus the giant giant gamepad. But that's just a yeah, I, I can see that. Um, but it's the only way I played it so far, and cool. I guess I have no real co- comparison in terms of unless I want to dig deep into my memory and remember the GameCube controller. But yeah, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm not frustrated. But yeah, other otherwise, how's the uh, how's the Wii U treating you? Like buyer's remorse or full speed ahead? <laughs> uh, as soon as I be- beat Wind Waker, I'm gonna throw it away. Okay, no, it's uh. It's an interesting system just to finally, <laughs> after all this time, sit down and, and explore how it actually works and see why people, I guess, haven't really warmed up to it. Or I think some of it's just also third parties in Nintendo actually getting software onto it. But I could see where I would be interested in playing this thing, at least for a while, uh, if... If it caught on better, mm-hmm. if people were like pushing out games, if people were like, "Hey, the Wii U is a pretty good system," I could see myself having picked maybe one of these up earlier and gotten really into it. I got pretty it does ex- some interesting thing. I got pretty excited from some of the Nintendo Direct stuff. Like, I am, I am stoked for Mario 3D World. Like, I. Me could- too. <laughs> That's the next one I want. Um, I'd be curious. Uh, what's your wife think of it? Uh, so when I first bought it. I didn't tell her I was buying it, <laughs> and then, the, and then the next day, when she was in a good mood, I'm like, "Hey, I got something to tell you. I bought a $300 game console." <laughs> and so, uh, <clears throat> she hasn't actually tried it out herself, but I might pick up. Um, I'm definitely gonna pick up Super Mario 3D World, and I believe you can play that multiplayer. So I'm hoping to actually sit down with mm-hmm. her. And play a multiplayer game on this. I might even try to pick up new Super Mario Brothers U, yep. even though I kind of I'm not like super excited about that aspect of Mario anymore. But I played the Wii version with her, and we had fun with that, and we had all sorts of jokes and good times. And so I'm like, I I do it again to you know validate my Wii U. 
I mean, I'm be... more excited about 3D World. Yeah. That uh, that looks like a lot of fun, even multiplayer. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm excited about some of the HD visuals coming out of um, out of Nintendo. Like, sure, yeah. they're kind of a you know they're kind of a generation behind, but still, I, this is the best their games have looked, and they have they have a good sense of style still. So, um, you know, it'll be it'll be much more fun to own the Wii U this holiday season than say last holiday season. So. Um, it, it looks that way, and I can get Bayonetta too now. So, <laughs> you know, fuck off, haters. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it for you in the Wii U, though. Um, you got no, idea. it's not. I just uh, last week picked up Pikmin Three as maybe one of the only people I know <laughs> that likes to play Pikmin, and I play a little bit of it and. Uh, I never got too far into Pikmin 2. In fact, I was looking for that game disc and couldn't find it, which disappointed the hell out of me. But Pikmin 3, I, I really am liking that so far. And that's another like advocate for me liking the gamepad, just having... I don't know, I guess maybe the gamepad's really great at just having maps in your lap. That's hmm, essentially yeah. like, all I seem to do with it, just touch screen maps for some it's reason. Fine. Yeah, hmm. they... They really help me out in playing these games. I feel like I know more about what I'm doing, and then the real est- the distribution of real estate in terms of what's happening on my TV and what's happening on this gamepad is is just nice to see more of. Yeah, these these kind of stunning HD graphics. Pikmin Three is another good looking game. Yeah, I um even with the DS, like I've ne- I was never a big fan of games that like heavily relied on the second screen, but using it as a compliment was always super effective for me. And that's what yeah. I made that immediate connection when they announced the game pad. I was like, Oh, some of the, like, you know, the, just the subtle things I like about the DS, I'll be able to do that in my living room now. And that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, just the little map and inventory stuff. I don't really care about the gimmicky yeah. things. I think it's like, it's a nice, it's a nice to have, like it doesn't break experiences if you don't have it, but it's a good enhancement. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, that's the best way to put it. It's a nice-to-have thing, and even if I didn't have it and the map was just something I could pull up in the game, you know, it it's not hurting the experience having this gamepad show me something rather than making me wait a second or two or break my action to see it. I feel more like I'm in the game, like, just to be a, a little astronaut controlling a bunch of little plant people and to refer to my gamepad, like, where are we in relation to where we need to be? It's... Mm-hmm. it's it, it brings a little bit of creativity, a, a, a little bit of, like, childish whimsy to playing these games that the other systems are they're all about hitting hard and graphics <laughs> and player, multiplayer, Call of Duty, and something about just sitting in, you know, a comfy chair referring to my gamepad to navigate Pikmin 3's world is, it, it's, it's different, it's unique, mm-hmm. and I, I appreciate Nintendo for putting stuff out like this. Cool. Um... It's a fun game. Yeah, I mean, did you play, I, I forget if you said, did you play Pikmin 1 and 2? I have played 1 and finished it, and then I, never I played started 2, two yeah. and for some reason the disc is lost somewhere yeah. in my house, and so I never finished that one. I don't know, like, Pikmin never hit heavy with me. It uh, Like, I enjoyed it initially, then it kind of became more of a chore as the game went on, so I never saw it through, and... I mean, I, I'm susceptible to Pikmin's charms. Like, I kind of want to try it, but I also kind of know I'll play it for, like, an hour, and that'll be it. So I've been holding back on this, even though I think it, you know, still looks charming as hell, and those Pikmin are adorable. Um, and, I don't know, it's, it's a great a, little puzzle strategy game, so. Yeah, it's a tough sell, uh, I guess, on someone that maybe played Pikmin, because Pikmin 1's structure yeah. is a little different than 3's, where one is strict, like so strict, like you have maybe 15 minutes to do a level and you only have 30 days to beat the entire game. <laughs> and if you mess up, I believe you, it's game over and you have to start all over. I don't know if it had any forgiveness in terms of, let, yeah, let's go back to this day. I can't remember that, but I just know it was pretty strict in its structure on, you know, get in, get out kind of stuff. But Pikmin 3 kind of is the best of both worlds, mm-hmm. where... You have 15 minutes per day before, you know, nighttime comes and all the enemies want to just tear you to pieces. And But you don't have a, a time limit in terms of you have so many days to, you know, complete your mission. It's more as long as you have the provisions, which you find by playing the game, 
as long as you can survive uh, on rations, you can keep going as long as you can. Cool. And so there's a little less uh, weight on you in terms of, oh, cool. you know, how do I need to plan out my day? Do I need to do this and this and this needs to go really well? And I hope I can do this quick enough. It's more of I've got enough fruit, you know, back in the ship. I can survive, you know, a few more yeah, nights I didn't, of story. I don't... I don't think I like the yeah. I don't think I like the tension as that game went on. Like it just became so much so much work. I I wanted to just kind of you know relax and play with the Pikmin rather than just accomplishing tax tasks. But uh, yeah, it just it did. It started to weigh on me towards the end there. That was kind of it. So um, it's, it's a real happy balance. Are there any like new abilities or things that surprised you or annoyed you? Like I don't know what uh, I got new Pikmin or what what. What stood out they there? They have two new Pikmin. They've kind of replaced Pikmin from Pikmin 2 with a rock Pikmin, which is good for smashing through glass and crystals. And there's a flying pink Pikmin, which flies. Imagine that. And so uh, I don't have all the Pikmin yet from what I've played. I'm still missing the blue ones, which can go underwater. And then I don't have the flyers, but... Um, I'm really attached to these little guys. Like they're so, they're so damn cute. And I, like you don't really know why they're just like little plant people, and they're mm-hmm. it's just how they'll follow you around and do what you want them to do. And when these dumb monsters come out of the ground and start eating them, you're like ah, you know, you just want to want to rail on them, like let stop, stop killing my friends. <laughs> These these people I just met, these little creatures I just met, stop murdering them, please. Yeah, yeah. But it does get yeah. When that game turns a little nasty, it kind of makes me uncomfortable. It's like when the pup dies in Spelunky. Like, oh, well, yeah. Mess, mess with my friends, but I'm not strong enough like, to really t- tell what you. What could no. I have done? Yeah. What could I have done differently to not <laughs> cause so many Pikmin to die? Uh, speaking of tragedy and death, uh, how the hell's Grand Theft Auto? Grand Theft Auto is. It's, it's the best and the worst. <laughs> that, that is my sell. And that's... I'm saying, <laughs> as a fan of Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto Five is maybe the... It's of the two, I guess. <laughs> that's kind of a dumb comparison. But of the two... This generation. Uh, Grand Theft Auto, you can buy it on the, in this generation. It is the superior one. Okay. It's still a lot of fun. The world's so much bigger. It's so much more intriguing than Liberty City. Is it, which, is mean, it more fun to play? I think it's more fun to play. I think it encourages more goofiness than Nico <laughs> Bellic ever did. <laughs> Nico, you're too and, serious, uh, buddy. Nico is too sad and serious, but <laughs> Grand Theft Auto V has been holding up. The story's been more more light, more fun, but that kind of brings me to the worst of it in that I feel so overwhelmed sometimes when I turn that game on. Last night I played it for a few hours and I was pretty much on point doing what I knew I wanted to do, knocking out missions and things. Mm -hmm. But some nights before that I turned it on and I would literally just like walk down the sidewalk and get to an intersection and be like, I don't know what I should do in this game. Oh, yeah. Like should I... My old school open world paralysis. Too many... Yeah. Too many options and like... Is it is it because there's too much, or is it because there's like not one thing that you're excited about? Like, is it the negative? There's there's too much, and it's it's so big that I don't I don't know what should I do first. What will I have the most fun doing right now? And there are things that I mean I know like I've played tennis. I tried it out. That's that's all right, but that's not like the thing that's gonna make me come back and play Grand Theft <laughs> yeah. Auto. Like let's let's go play tennis against the AI. That's Just not what I want to do. Can. Just because I can. But at one point yesterday, I got access to the golf course, and I'm like, I'll have to try out the golf game and see how that is in Grand Theft Auto. Like, this could be, you know, like a fun, goofy thing I do. But I don't imagine I'll play golf and then be like, all right, and then come back at a later date and go, you know what? I really want to play golf in Grand Theft Auto V again. I'm just going to do it once. It's like a fun little diversion. I mean, I remember being really put off by the the dates that you'd have to go on in Grand Theft Auto 4 like yeah that, and it was just like are you doing this to just show me that you have darts and bowling in the game or do you really think I want to play this stuff like it's it's kind of like on one hand it's kind of cool you put that in the game but I'm like on the other like really don't give a shit <laughs> 
that's essentially. I mean, that's the. It's it's letting the characters that they create live in a world that seems to exist around them rather than you're you are the world like everything that happens in you know San Andreas is because of you it makes it feel like people are doing stuff and they don't even there are people in that state that just don't even know who you are and, and I get that they're trying to build that kind of world but it's like I don't want to be forced to go play darts or bowl or you know, get drunk with my cousin and then stumble around the street. You know, once you do it the first time, it's funny. Mm-hmm. But then later, I'm like, I don't want to go get drunk again. I mean, whereas, good. Uh, I was gonna say like, whereas, uh, just on the drunk angle, <laughs> GTA Four. I would hardly ever go drinking because I'm like, what's the point? I could be doing something else. Grand Theft Auto Five by giving you three characters makes the spontaneity of all these activities so much more entertaining in that I switched, I did a mission with one character, was like, okay, I'll go see what another character is doing. So I switched to Trevor, who is drunk on a roof <laughs> and just like complaining to himself. And as soon as I got control of him, he's stumbling around and I have to wait for like the wooziness to wear off. And I'm like, this rock star, this is a funny implementation of being drunk that if I come back to it, and he's drunk in a different location. This will be funny to me probably every time. <laughs> Whereas, you know, I think I'm going to go get drunk because he stumbles around weird. Surprise me. I think that that's I mean, what it takes to make me like it. I mean, I think if anything ends up pulling me into this game, it'll be the heist stuff and just the the fact of the, the three different characters. Everybody's just going on and on about Trevor, too. But uh, just <laughs> the fact that, I don't know, having those three characters, you kind of... You can explore like different ways to play the game a little bit, a little bit more. There's a little less. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to call it pressure, but like there was a, there was a bit to Grand Theft Auto Four where where I just felt like I was I was trying to play as Nico rather than just doing wanton destruction. And same same thing happened in Red Dead Redemption where, like, I didn't want to just like break the law to break the law. I just didn't feel like that was within John Marston's character the way that I was playing him. Yeah. And I, I felt kind of that. And it was. In one hand, it made the story like resonate a lot more, but that, I mean, hell, uh, the for the first few years that I played Grand Theft Auto One and Two, and even Three, um, I didn't really do many of the missions. I just caused chaos because it was a blast, and I've never felt that freedom yeah. with the more modern um, Grand Theft Auto games or, or the Rockstar games, even though they're not really stopping me. But I don't know this this. These multiple characters kind of open that that world back up because you know you can almost put it yeah. in context for Trevor because he's insane and he's he's an, a sociopath. So why wouldn't he just go on this this crazy crime spree? Yeah, and they really encourage that kind of stuff. They they give you ideas of who these characters are when you are not them. That it makes you kind of more likely to experiment. And say, well, this character is likely to do this kind of stuff, and I'm in the mood to do this kind of stuff, so I'll be that character. Or, like, this character is Trevor, and he's insane, and he would probably just go shoot up a sidewalk because why not? It's Sunday. And so, uh... <coughs> yeah, Jordan's saying he's I, not, I, I, not even going to play the game because of tw- Trevor. And that's completely fine, because that kind of brings me to... I'm going to try not to get into too spoiler-filled uh, territory... But last night, I got to a point in the game, and people have talked about this enough that I think I can say what the part is, but there is a torture scene mm-hmm. in Grand Theft Auto V, and I, I don't see myself as being overly critical or something or overly sensitive to things, but as that scene went on and on, I found myself thinking, this is really sick, and where, is the, where are we going with this, <laughs> and... Of course, I mean, they fit it within that Trevor was probably the most likely character to actually torture someone. But I think they really, they, they paid that off for me. Mm-hmm. Like, after doing all that, the way that mission end, the way that mission ended, I was like, oh, okay, I, I get it. <laughs> I get why I sat here and I, I did a bunch of stuff that I was really kind of uncomfortable doing, even as the sociopathic character, but... I'll, I'll accept it now. I get, I kind of get what happened, and so it's it's a really interesting kind of game. A lot more than four ever was to me. Four was kind of going through the motions. I like Grand Theft Auto. I'll play more of it, but five kind of just, I find myself thinking about stuff more, and I'm enjoying 
the thought I put into a Grand Theft Auto game, considering whenever whenever someone brings up Grand Theft Auto, they're pretty much like, isn't that the game where you beat up hookers? Yeah. 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 It's You can also tell if they know what they're talking about when they talk about it that way. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I think it was really smart that they did the three characters. I didn't think that'll go down as the most intriguing part of Grand Theft Auto V, but I'll be I'll be curious to see see the how much of a longevity this game has. Uh, speaking of which, the online mode came out today. Yep. I'm guessing online is live. Yeah, I'm guessing you haven't had time to mess with it since we jumped right into podcasting. But are you are you excited about trying it out? I am very interested in seeing <laughs> how online holds up. Considering Grand Theft Auto 4 had online, but it never hooked me or felt like more than a. Isn't it cool that this game lets multiple people play it at the same time now? Mm-hmm. And so I played it for a little while, and then I didn't really care about leveling my character up or playing more of it. But 5 looks like it's going to do things a little more interestingly. I watched someone streaming it earlier, and they were having fun, and they were setting up impromptu races and climbing up the tallest mountain and fighting cops together. And I'm like, this could be a lot of fun if you get like enough of your friends get, involved. Get a crew and- together. Yeah, get a crew together, and you could just go on all sorts of zany adventures just because mm-hmm. it's a more interesting world than Liberty City was. And to answer someone in the chat, I was at the strip club last night. So, yes, I do keep going back there, <laughs> and I and it is weird every single time, but it makes me laugh. No, it actually makes me think of uh, Conan uh, has continued his clue, clue, Clueless Gamer series, and he did his I saw that. Grand Theft Auto review with... Basically trying to take down the strip club. It's pretty pretty. That was pretty damn the fun. helicopter versus strip club was yeah. pretty good. <laughs> okay. So I have not really talked about the arcade challenge uh, much lately. We're still continuing to do that on a weekly basis in my office, just rotating between arcade games. Um, the most recent ones uh, last week, no two weeks ago now actually. Um, was a we played a game called Karnov which I played a lot of back on my uh, Nintendo. This was uh, Nintendo, my my NES. Um, (laughs) This is the platformer slash shooter starring the, like, the Russian strongman, uh, where he basically shoots fireballs out of his belly. At least it seems that way. Uh, It has really, really terrible controls, um, but it, it plays into the challenge of the game. One of those games where it's a platformer where if you get hit, uh, once you die, um, there's all kinds of little items to pick up, and you know you think back of the, back to the NES controller. It's not very many buttons. The way that you scroll through your inventory whenever you pick up like ladders or um, like sprint shoes, you have to like it cycles through them as you move. So like every time you're hitting the right button to move to the right, it's also moving the inventory. So you kind of have to like move your character back and forth on the screen to adjust the inventory if you want to select an item and use it. That's kind of how old school it is. Um, Wow. But yeah, this game is, it's weird. Uh, Like, uh, you fight, one of the bosses is a giant dinosaur. Um, There's, um, uh, it's got kind of like a mix of, mix of mythologies, uh, like a lot of, it kind of reminds me of some of the, the enemies from Altered Beast. Um, But it's, it's really difficult. There's, this two-headed dragon that always hunts you every time you t- like take too much time on the level, and when we're playing for score, which is what we're all about each week, um, that dragon showed up a lot. But to the but we also <laughs> fa- we also figured out if you kill the dragon, he's worth a lot of points. So we were this was one of the games that we like really tried to you know really find the secrets to try to get high scores as fast and cheaply as possible. So we didn't really get much progress in the game but we all had all these like kind of cheap tactics to try to rack up our score and um sometimes that's frowned upon but when everybody's everybody's playing that way it kind of becomes kind of funny so anyway i didn't know there was a arcade version of this it's pretty much identical to the nes just slightly better graphics but it's a weird weird game um i don't know how many people actually know about it but because like i said it was one of those games that i rented a lot and somehow it ended up in my collection as as a kid but kind of realized growing up that no one else really played it so um, i've never heard of it until tonight fair enough it's a data east game they made a bunch of weird stuff 
I like um, the idea. When you talked about the dragon hunting you down, I immediately thought about the Spelunky ghost. And when you yeah. said you killed it, it was worth a lot of points. I'm like, I want to kill that Spelunky ghost. Uh, can you do anything? Can you kill the Spelunky ghost? No, yes. you can't kill the you Spelunky ghost. You can take the ghost, picture of him and he like kind of cheeses for the camera a bit. But is there anything else you yeah. can do to him? You can die. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, a more widespread game, but we are, like, this is probably, we're probably close to our 30th game. Um, so I'm, I wouldn't say scraping the barrel yet, but, you know, finding some um, lesser known classics, I guess, in our ar- arcade game hunt. But um, we did play Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, last week, and uh, that game, it's, all the Donkey Kong games are pretty damn hard. It, this is, difficult in a completely yeah. different way than um than the original but so you're actually playing as donkey kong jr who if you've played modern donkey kong games he's grown up to be the modern donkey kong that's kind of a little tidbit i learned in looking up looking up about this game but the intro to the game is mm. just it's super sad like basically these two marios are caging up regular uh, donkey kong your dad and you're just like down there bawling your eyes out because Mario's stealing your dad, and you've got to go, go get him back. And it's all about you know climbing vines and using fruit to knock down enemies that are all in the vines with you and trying to survive. So, but it's got a couple cool uh, level designs, and um, I don't know the, it's one of those games like Donkey Kong, like some of the other classics, that it's so tightly designed that the difficulty becomes really fun to play in kind of a competitive and competitive ma- manner, but. Um, I never really spent much time with Donkey Kong Jr., so it's kind of neat to see how different it was from the original. Yeah, I've never played that one, but I had seen pictures of it before. But that story is quite depressing. It's it's <laughs> that tra- setup it's tragic. It's just I mean they make Mario out to be evil, and he's got like a doppelganger. It's not Luigi. They're dressed exactly the same. It's kind of creepy that because of that. <laughs> Hired some dude to dress like me. Let's steal a monkey. But that was that was. One of my favorite games in, in a in a while that we've played. This week's games, uh, even weirder. I doubt you're gonna know what. I don't even know how to pronounce the game. I think it's Gaius. Um, do you ever play Tempest? Yeah, I think but you so. know it's Tempest. Yeah, so it's one of those kind of circular tube yeah. shooters. But yeah. it's like it's like Tempest meets Galaga because it's got like mm. spaceships coming after your spaceship, but you're still going around the the edge of the screen shooting at them in the distance as they're coming coming up at you and um okay very very traditional it's that's all about shooting and points but i usually try to mix it up from when we play like a platformer to doing something a little bit more action oriented or at least something where we're tapping the uh the shoot button a lot because <laughs> that's what the kids like so i'd be curious to Captain see buttons. where we keep going with this arcade challenge but i'll Keep updating you as we find more games. Um, I was in a little bit of a old school mood last week. I don't know. It was. I wrote a little bit about it on my horrible horrible gamer post. But I just when I after I was sick, I didn't really want to think about video games, and I just kind of wanted to play some old school shooters. And happened to be on a week where two of them came out. Uh, at least two games inspired by old school shooters: uh, Alien Rage and Shadow Warrior. So I was playing that last week um alien rage i still forgot to look up who actually developed the damn game but this one looked just like really really old school it just looked like you know when i say old school i'm thinking like doom doom style shooters where it's just waves upon waves of enemies and uh while you are playing as a space marine versus aliens that you can head shop that have all kinds of different weapons and the game looks great like any other unreal engine powered game I I was surprised to find out that the uh, your your particular Space Marine's kind of a wuss. Like uh, <laughs> I, I was going down after only two or three hits, and um, that was really the only the only big flaw in the game because it just affected the pacing so much. So I started thinking about like you know how would I if they had if they had made it so you could respawn really quickly after you died and like, like, you know, think almost super meat boy style, like restart the checkpoint really quick. Yeah. I think the, um, that would have really helped the game. Cause the pacing just completely threw me off. Once you were like knee deep in the action and blowing dudes up, it was satisfying as hell and looked pretty sharp. And, um, the dudes blowed up good. The weapons blowed up good. <laughs> um, a lot of blowing up. Yeah. 
And then a combination of, like, meaty aliens and kind of robot stuff, which I think, you know, after you played through Binary, binary Domain, there's there's been a severe lack of, you know, blowing up robot parts. It's, it's a different kind of satisfaction than blowing up uh, flesh. <laughs> yeah, they should never let go of knocking robots into pieces. That's That should be a, a classic, a classic staple. But yeah, the the checkpoints in that game, they were we not saw forgiving. a lot of those. Yeah, yeah, we saw a lot of those over and over again. Uh, a lot about aliens taking your jobs. A yeah, lot I forgot about, about that. A little yeah. friend. <laughs> it was like a mining colony or something. I don't even know what the plot was, but there was, there was an unnecessary amount of dialogue. They tried. and um, Yeah. I still forgot to look up who the who was doing the voice of the hero because he sounded a little bit a little bit like Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War, but <laughs> you know it just it wasn't offensive anyway. It was just it just fit the mold, which is which is exactly what I was looking for. But I was just frustrated that I couldn't, you know, just constantly sprint through that game, and I was having to take cover a lot. But there's not a, really a cover system, so it's more of you know go around the corner or crouch behind a you know uh, uh, some sort of you know box or whatever yeah. and um i don't know and they had some invisible guys that were just annoying me um so it was fun to play but it was easy to, it's easy to be critical of the game too because uh, it's yeah it's, i could see that you could tell what it was going for but it didn't quite get what made those fun it actually started to remind me a little bit of serious sam 3 in that regard so speaking of serious sam 3 <laughs> i played <laughs> shadow warrior which is the new remake of that classic 3d classic of that old 3d realms game um and holy shit was this game entertaining <laughs> right out of the gate i mean it really was you you open any video game with uh by playing uh this the song the touch and you've got my attention but the writing was really <laughs> i don't know it, i mean it was dumb but it was it was clever and, and it was funny and i was i was i was right on it right into it from the from the start it was uh i don't know it's like i kept thinking it was going to cross a line between being like dumb, offensive, and and kind of racist, but it just yeah. <laughs> it tr- kind of treaded that line and had fun, had fun with itself. But um, the big big gameplay seller on this was the fact that you know you're also a ninja, so you're managing kind of what chi powers and guns and swords, and the the sword play in this is awesome and really satisfying and they've got little combo moves where you you know you double tap a direction and it'll do a different uh different kind of uh sword attack and um or utilize magic and all the enemies cut up into bits really nicely um but <laughs> but just don't uh, as i learned from the in the highlight clip i posted last week don't don't mess with the bunnies when they're when they're mating though Those... <laughs> never do that um, but yeah, it was full of a lot of goofiness. It was it was silly, and it just kept lay, layering it on. It was just like, okay, I can I can sign up for this. I didn't think this is where this was gonna go, but like, you know, you you kind of meet up with this demon that you kind of partner up with, and neither of you really like each other, and the back and forth, <laughs> like you're just you know you're just constant you know put downs and slams and comebacks and. But he's a demon, and you're fighting a ton of demons as well as, you know, other Japanese gangsters. So it uh, it is weird yeah. as far as the the con the the setting, the content, the gameplay is pretty familiar, and it's got a lot of promise with, like I said, balancing the guns and the 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 sword play. But uh, yeah, as far as like what was actually going on in the game, it was it was totally bizarre. It was like a real Saturday morning cartoon of a violent nature, yeah. And that, like, you were you walked behind a waterfall, and there was like a sprite lady taking the, a the anime um, chick, the, the yeah, the, yeah. The, the yeah, the pixelated sprite of the anime chick taking a shower, and then like if you God as I was exploring, <laughs> as I was exploring the game, I found like more animated sprites from the original Shadow Warrior, which was, you know, kind of more oh, yeah. uh, Duke Nukem 3D era engine graphics, and I even stumbled into an area that they replaced all the textures with textures from that game. Like, it was like, I'm all of a sudden walking down <laughs> a hallway from the original. So, like I said, it's got a really great sense of humor and doesn't take itself seriously, and I kind of appreciate that, because it could have gotten really dumb had it taken itself seriously. Yeah. Um, 
But that that was a surprise. I was not going to play this game. Like I thought, I thought this remake was just I don't know what it was. Just a a cash grab with a misinformed cash grab. But um, this is from you know they're it's from the guys that made the hard reset game, which is one of the best shooters of the last couple of years. That's a good one. At least old school style. And then um, the publishers from Hotline Miami put this out, and then I believe some of the team from Serious Sam 3 was helping out. So I, there's probably some Serious Sam tech in this. So um, it had a pretty decent team behind it, and I, I felt like they, they knew what they were um, trying to make. And, yeah, um, you know, while I wouldn't say it scratched my old-school shooter itch that I was after because the, the sword play is so different, I could... If I really just wanted to shoot things, this wouldn't be the game I'd go to. But it was still kind of good, mindless fun. So, yeah, that was a like a weird one. Like I never played the original, and I got like a coupon in Steam. Like you can get like so much percent off uh, Shadow Warrior, and I'm like Shadow Warrior. I don't know what that is. This picture doesn't look all that great. I, I think you're you're selling me a lemon here. Yeah. And I was so glad you played it because I was like, wow, you know, judging a book entirely wrong. Yeah, it I, looks like a lot of fun. It was just pretty. It was a sharp game. I um, I saw some trailer a couple weeks ago for it that had that kind of gave me a little cl- little hint that this game was willing to poke fun at itself. Like they were just going on about the features of this game, like you know, most realistic swords, most realist, most <laughs> bunny fucking or whatever, whatever, whatever it was. I was just like, most realistic leaves and water, and um. So I was like, yeah, I'll kind of, I'll see what happens when this game comes out. And then Best I read, fish AI. Yeah, that was it. That was it. And uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'll 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 pay attention to the reviews when it came out. And I read a couple, and I was just like, I gotta get I gotta give this game a shot. Like if I'm gonna play Alien Rage, which I mindlessly went into based on how stupid its trailers were, but I was looking for big dumb fun out of that. I was like, if I'm gonna play Alien Rage, I should at least try Shadow Warrior too. So uh, pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, the other new game I played, and I'm not sure when this came out, uh, actually, but I played Delver last night, which is a first-person roguelike dungeon crawler. Um, it started to remind me of, um, Paranautical Activity, which I played a couple weeks ago, which is the first-person shooter roguelike, but Delver, Delver's, uh... Like random, randomly generated levels were just a lot more entertaining. It felt it, it, I was much more inclined to explore the nooks and crannies of the levels, and their their loot was well distri- distributed. Because like every time I would kill a guy, I'd get something to play with or swap out in my inventory. And um, they went with a you know it's first person you know three D graphics, but it's all it's all pixel art as well. So it has a um, kind of retro style to it there and. Um, you know, I died almost immediately when I started playing it, which is a good sign for any <laughs> roguelike. I do know that um, one of our community members, Dean, uh, happened to beat the game on his first try. So uh, Delver is currently in early access release, so it's technically a beta. But, uh, no, so I'm not sure if that's going to affect things, but it was also only like 8 bucks. So um, I was I had a lot of fun with it. I liked it, and I wanted to pick it up back when it first came out, but I've been really wary of early access titles in general, and not so much that I think that they're not going to deliver, but that I'll try them out, I'll maybe enjoy them some, and then when they become complete, I will have moved on and forgotten they existed and are in my library. Yeah, that's kind of my what I've noticed with early access games. So I got over my initial hesitation, which was, at first I didn't want to pick them up when they're early access. Like, I don't want to like spoil a potentially great experience by playing it when it might be kind of broken, especially with games I'm yeah. sure about. But I kind of got over that. I like played Mercenary Kings, played Sorry You're Being Hunted, played a couple others. But uh, with I have noticed with the ones that I played, you know, a couple months ago, I'm not going back to them because I don't want to play them until they're fully done again or fully yeah. done for the first time. Um, but I'm also forgetting about them and moving on. Like I, I'm not going to be excited to come back around to them. So those early access, yeah. navigating those early access games, do that kind of at your own risk. I don't really know what the right method is yet. 
Yeah, it's it, you just gotta feel it, I guess. You you pick up a game and hope for the best when it comes to early access. But a lot of them, at least a lot of ones that we've been trying out, I think have been pretty well. Like they've done pretty well. They've been pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't like I've been only picking up sure surefire hits. Some of the guys have been sending me links to like. First of all, Steam needs to have a badge. They need to have some sort of like very <laughs> obvious label in. Um, in their list view of these games, so let me know which ones are early access and which aren't, because it's yeah. just impossible to kind of like I kind of get a letdown every time I see oh this game looks interesting oh it's it's early, early access. access I don't really know anything about it and right now I'm not willing to put down money on an early access game unless I feel like it's a surefire hit or I feel like I fully understand the game and yeah. there are more of these out every day you know um, you know State of Decay came out um, I think two weeks ago. And uh, Ethan blew through that, but like I picked that up only because I knew that it was pretty much the 360 version, and they're still gonna keep adding stuff. But, um, but yeah, I don't know what made me take the risk on Delver. The the price was right, like I said, eight bucks versus a lot of these have been yeah. like twenty. They've uh, been like twenty, and that's ridiculous to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's something to keep an eye on. It's definitely an interesting. Um, and I also I saw saw a early access game that was on sale today that was also very bizarre it's a whole new marketplace out there friends it's uh kind of weird but but kind of exciting too because um finding yeah. all, finding new games to play every week no problem okay. no complaints um quick nod to i'm trying to finish up saints row the third the lo- i think i'm in the last third of the game and holy shit that story has really or the fourth <laughs> The four. Sorry, Saints, yeah, Saints Row, Row the f- <laughs> Saints Row four. I'm in the last third. Thank you. Um, and I've just n- now I'm just all about finishing up the uh, the story missions. I've got all the I think I've got all my loyalty missions done. Um, which that's just funny that that game has loyalty missions. Um, and some of them have yeah. just been fantastic. So that game is wrapping up quite nicely. And uh, um, I wish I'd sprinted through it quicker, but I'm still enjoying it. Um, and then I've fallen behind on my Rayman uh, Legends challenges. Oh, are, no. you still, are you still playing that game? I have not gone back to it since I put Grand Theft Auto Five in there, but I did beat the game. My wife and I saw credits, so oh, I don't no feel shit. so bad about that. So you yeah. guys got through the whole so we thing. Finished it. Yeah. What'd you think of it? Yeah. Uh, I think I might have said this before, but it's one of those cases where Rayman is kind of. It's kind of a tough platformer. It's not like a super yeah. easy one necessarily. So she's kind of felt, you know, like the second hand to my expert in terms of trying to run through okay. these levels. But like, I kept ensuring her, like, we're not being serious. You know, you're not making me mad if you, yeah. like, fall behind or if I have to wait for you to catch up with me. And I'm like, this kind of adds a new dimension to me playing the game because I tend to play a lot of games. You know, I would be playing this just at my own speed, kind of probably blazing through it without her, but it's a lot more interesting to me. It's such a beautiful game that sometimes standing there and letting us move together as a unit gives me time to look at what's happening and what the graphics are and kind of take in the art. And so, no harm done, but yeah, we really enjoyed playing that together, and uh, that's a fun game to look at and to listen to. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, how did um, so? I've only done one music level. Do those even get better, like from the, ca- they, the castle level on? They get great. <laughs> uh, cool. They get really great. Uh, one of the music levels is probably my favorite, just because it starts in a certain musical style, and it doesn't sound like any song you know, and then it turns into the song that it is. Mm. And I was like, "This is my new favorite." It, <laughs> and then there's like a. It's great. I don't want to say any more about it, but yeah, Rayman Legends is just it's just a good, charming game. Cool. Cool. I yeah, I keep my main motivation to play through that game is to get all the music levels, so hopefully I remember to go back That's to it. That's a great great goal. <laughs> Admirable. Oh man, we're running out it's fucking October. I'm running out of time. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Gotta get all these games in. Game of the year. <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, you're right. Uh. <laughs> um, as far as stuff that's going on with the site and what we're working on, um, our hundred dollars for a hundred night moves contest is still open, so there is still time to enter. 
Uh, we are looking for 20 entrants to help us vote on our your favorite highlight video to figure out what the best one on the site is. And uh, once we get enough entrants and enough views on that video, I'll close it up and we will randomly select one of the voters uh, to receive a $100 gift card. So there's links to that on the site as well as on our Twitch channel um, if you're looking for that link. Uh, and if you have entered, spread the word so we can wrap this contest up and, and, and get that gift card out there. So Some great highlights in there, too, worth <laughs> watching again and again. Those, reel, those reels are fun to cut. And we've already started. I think we're already three deep now in, into the next batch of Night Moves. So the highlights are not stopping for, uh, for the contest. So we'll continue that. Um, I took a week off of the Splunky Daily Challenges. Feeling really good about that. Happy to be... Uh, get back into that last night. So, more Spelunky coming. Um, and then we missed you, pup. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, 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 sh- I shot pup again last night. I keep killing. I kill. Uh, I kill him way too much lately. Um, stop killing pup. I took a little break from my horror game streams. I finished Outlast and Amnesia: The Dark Descent. But be on the lookout for upcoming streams with Amnesia: Machine for Pigs as well as Doorways. Uh, those are the two on my radar, uh, anyway. And maybe some Cry of Fear. Um, so, October is a good time for some horror games. But um, So I'll keep balancing those out with... You know, right now, my open games are still Skyrim, Earthbound, and Wind Waker. So, um, as well as new stuff. So I'm streaming, trying to stream uh, a couple times a week around our podcast, as well as at least... Um, Monday nights have kind of become my game Curious Nights, where I play something new. Um, and then hopefully a weekend stream uh, when I can, and I'll try to do my longer weekend streams um, during the day on the weekends uh, when when I have the time, which should be in the winter. That's a little bit easier because we're, you know, weather's not as nice. So, um, yeah. article wise, I mean, I've got a few things. We've been getting pumping out a lot of reviews. Those will keep coming. Um, a lot of my time right now is actually spent planning for our upcoming marathon slash game jam so um i'm hoping to announce all that stuff next week hopefully that starts coming together um but that'll be uh right now we're looking at saturday november 2nd for that event um and once that starts coming together hopefully i'll I'll pump out some more kind of creative retro uh articles on the site but aaron you're playing a lot of games any of those looking like review worthy i know they're Since they're console games, they're not yeah. quite as easy to stream, so that's kind of taking you off of our streaming schedule a little bit. Yeah, it's it's hard when you drop money on a Wii U and then try to justify buying the equipment to stream said Wii U, but I've got a few console games going. I'm hoping to finish them. Grand Theft Auto, I, I'm pretty much... I don't know if I really care at this point to try to actually get a review out on that, because right. it's such a big game, it'll take me forever, but I might drop an opinion piece or something on that just to really flesh out all the feelings I'm feeling in terms of what that game makes me think about. Um, other than that, I mean, Pikmin 3, I'm thinking I might try to write something up on it just to represent the <clears throat> little plant guys, yep. get them some uh, some sight time. And there's a, and, uh, some Nintendo releases coming up as well. Yeah, and some other Nintendo stuff. So it'll be it'll be nice to actually get back on that Nintendo front. And Pokemon comes out soon. I don't oh, know shit. if I'll oh, be reviewing shit. that, but I... I will represent some Pokemon, too. I think you need some sort so of, I, like, I don't know, look back on your Pokemon addiction over the years type of piece. <laughs> yeah, so I'm hoping to get some kind of creative pieces out there that are maybe, like, partial review, partial introspective to whatever randomness I can get on a page. So that should be fun. Um, beyond that, Ethan is on vacation this week. Uh, he'll be back on the podcast next week and, um, you know, stream some more. I know he has a lot to say about Castle Story coming up, so and, and I'm going to try to be playing that game as well. Um, and uh, so we'll check in with him when he gets back and um, try to think what else is in the queue that I know of. Um, Cole's working on an editorial, but we'll see where that goes. Um, anyway, <clears throat> let's get out of here with game pitches. I jotted down some random notes. None of them fully fleshed out but let's start with <laughs> looking at this fucking this this NBA 2K14 release and the fact that it is so focused on LeBron James let's just 
let's just try to break sports games. I, I started I, actually I started <laughs> thinking about this because I saw some NFL I saw some Colts players uh, on Twitter posting about playing NBA 2K14 and it's like this this bizarre image of these pro athletes like playing each other's games or playing as each other became very weird that I'm like you know if if that this is strange. Is, if this is where LeBron James has kind of set the bar with you know make this decision this upcoming life decision for me and play that out in a game like what other mun- mundane things can we make games around in the life of professional athletes because I'm trying to think of you know how do they one up each other from here um I don't know if you had anything <laughs> if that gave you any ideas but um um that would be funny just imagining the game that's in the life. Like maybe a, you buy a sports game and it starts off like a real – like a start of a season. But when that first game is over, like you are LeBron James and you like start the next day at, at his house after a big party or something. And you have to like go through his life just doing like weird mini games and solving his problems, going into like dialogue menus to talk to people where all the choices are basically I'm LeBron James and I think I'm so damn great or something like that. Or what if what if it was more of an adventure game for all like the uh, for all the rookies or all the troubled professional athletes that make all the poor decisions that end up getting them <laughs> thrown out of the league. Um, I'm trying to think of a of an example, but like I forget the you know, the um, hell use use some of the old the old pacers that would just, you know, had guns in the strip club and just like that <laughs> that like moment in the game where you choose okay tonight I'm gonna wear sweatpants um, we're gonna go to the strip club and yes I should bring I should bring my gun along with me <laughs> I should be packing I <laughs> should should, should do, do you want to be packing yes or no <laughs> yes or no always yes like you go into the option menus always be packing I mean I really just want to get back store. I want to get back to the the age of gaming where it's okay, where we can have games like Bill Lambier's combat basketball. Yeah. That's really the sports games that I want. Like the, and I love the, the baseball simulator games, the base wars, the, you know, the robots that play baseball. I mean, hell even, you know, arch rivals where you get to play a little bit dirty. Um, I don't know. I just, sports games are really boring and I want to fix them. What would fix them for you? Yeah, they're trying to get really realistic and like, oh, play a whole season and watch their stats improve. And it's they're pretty much creating this weird ant farm, I think, of like you have all your sports players that you know and love in this little container, and you just want to groom them into the best thing that they can be. It's like a weird, it's like a weird dollhouse yeah. for sports lovers. And I think feel like they should get away from it, and make it more dollhouse. fun. I like. I so like you're the, playing doll. They are on some level. It is playing dolls. Or playing. You are playing dolls with real people, <laughs> real professionals. And I would like to get back to the stuff that was like NFL Blitz, where it's just big, beefy, no nobodies just like smashing each other to the ground while throwing a tiny, you know, leather pigskin. Big beefy each nobodies. Other. Just big beefy nobodies. Hey, where I it's mean. Just kind of fun. With uh, EA, EA kind of screwing up their college licensing, they, there might be room for a big, beefy nobody's game. <laughs> there could be a whole... I play uh, it. You could do... You know, they used to... You know, the that Mutant League Kickstarter started. They had a series... You know, a couple different Mutant League games. What You could make the big, beefy league games. Do all the sports. Yes. And beefy league. It's essentially... That's what I want. <laughs> I would buy a sports game. Just beefy league. Just... But I want it to be like a compilation. It needs to have all the sports, not just one big beefy sport. We need to like get big beefy fishermen, volleyball, <laughs> just everything. Oh, I could, I would Easter be Easter egg hunt. <laughs> big beefy volleyball man, and you, uh, the championship matches against the guys from Top Gun. Be good stuff. With with the same what? music and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what chat was actually throwing out some ideas. Jordan, <laughs> I was actually thinking of this. He's just training for basketball, like the boring fundamental stuff. I was like, what if, <laughs> you know, I, my my least favorite thing when I used to play basketball was the uh, when you'd have to sh- stay after practice and shoot like 100 free throws, but just like incorporating that boring ass uh, type of practice in the games. 
PF Bowling 2014, you play as a middle-aged modern Fred Flintstone who constantly argues with his wife and only his only escape is bowling. <laughs> actually, <laughs> that's actually pretty funny because the uh, you know bowling professional bowling you don't really know what the drama is outside of outside of the lanes. That could be. <laughs> you could do a kingpin I, game. Was it that? Oh, you could. Um, I like the I like the name of it. That sounds like a roller coaster too. <laughs> I'd ride the kingpin. The big beefy. The big beefy kingpin. All right, you want to change gears? You got anything? The only thing that came to mind is pretty much just a mashup of the fact that I'm playing Pikmin 3. Mm -hmm. Just a fun, charming kind of strategy kind of game. And then Grand Theft Auto. And since online just launched with Grand Theft Auto, I was like, what if there was a game where you just controlled like a hundred criminals in a squad is essentially like the opposite of the wonderful one at that point. So it's pretty much like you just have a bunch of mayhem causing people and you're controlling them all at the same time, splitting them into different groups and you're just causing all sorts of mayhem. It would essentially be the next gen rampage world tour that I haven't gotten yet. <laughs> just <laughs> going around like the country or the world with all these squads of different criminals and they all have maybe different stats or something that somehow matter in some way, but essentially you're just causing as much mayhem as possible. And then okay. and, and then if you make that multiplayer, just tons of little people, and you got this bird's eye view of just fire starting the explosions, and then LeBron James has to make it to the basketball game one time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just merge it all together. As long as... Uh... Oh, what we can agree with chat that it needs to be called Big Beefy Pikmin Online. Big Beefy Pikmin Online. Yeah. Essentially, that's all it needs to be, just a bunch of big, beefy men and women, both big and beefy, going around the city and the world I don't causing know, they need, chaos. They need to add something to Pikmin. Like, I feel like they, they nailed the formula three times, honestly. And Yeah. Um, I think if you did expand it into some multiplayer whether you make it gta ridiculous or not is that's a whole other level but i was trying to think what else could get me actually interested in that game um and yeah the the wonderful one-on-one was kind of clamoring for an open world an open world setting i'm trying to think um that would be great mm -hmm. sequel call us <laughs> platinum <laughs> so another idea that came up this week during the Nintendo Direct, um, they were talking about some of the changes coming up to the new Legend of Zelda game, A Link Between Worlds? Is that? Yeah, it's the name. That, the 3DS one? Yeah. Um, and okay. that they're trying to like get rid of some of the fundamental Zelda uh, features. Like uh, the, big, the big one in this one is that um, you can actually rent or buy any of the items at any point from the store... And oh. so you can do the dungeons in whatever order you'd like. And uh, first of all, I read that as I thought they were adding microtransactions to the game, and I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" But they actually do. They mean buy or rent in the game, not with real world money. So don't worry about that. <laughs> but I was trying to think of what else, what other kind of Zelda tropes they they could get rid of to actually make it more interesting, but still make it Zelda. So that was, I think, that was a good one. Play the because the, they were saying in the first game, technically. You could play the the dungeons in any order, so giving a little bit open world and, ch and choice to it could be good. Yeah, that's a real tough thought, and I've never really put much into it other than saying if they make another Zelda game after Skyward Sword, I would like to see them do something different and go outside the box, but when you actually sit down and think, how do you keep a Zelda game in its mold but also break out of it at the same time, that's a really... Like, I've never actually considered, like, what would be a part of that game that I think would be crucial to, you know, expanding outside of the box that Zelda lives in. But yeah, the idea of buying and renting the items rather than this item lives in a chest inside of a dungeon. And like, it seems weird. I guess when you think about it, it's like in Wind Waker, Link eventually gets a boomerang 
But does that mean that no one else in the world has this boomerang? That there are no other boomerangs, and there's just this one that someone put in a chest for some reason? It's a magical boomerang. Come it's on. a magical boomerang, yeah. and there's, it's the only one. It's just waiting there but for Link to get. I always it. thought that. I always thought that with the hook shot. Like I was like, that seems to be like a, you know, a fundamental device. It's not you utilizing any magical properties. The boomerang, you could say, you know, because it yeah, always comes back to you. One. But like some of those more practical items, like the hammer and that kind. Of, like, well, I guess that would. Yeah, but the the hook shot. Is what, <laughs> going back to the hook shot, like anybody, like a you know, a a good craftsman could make a good uh, make a hook shot for you. You don't need to find that. Yeah. In the in the treasure, but I think that's a that's a good start for them. I'm just trying to think of what other more open yeah. world stuff. Because I mean, the big tease was they said they were going to try to take some inspiration from from Skyrim, and um, they said they've kind of called back on that for whatever the unannounced re- Wii U. Zelda game is going to end up being, but it really kind of got my my wheels turning in my head a bit of what what could they pull from Skyrim to make Zelda a great. Um, <laughs> PF is of wheels turning. <laughs> PF is hammering home the. Uh, I think it would be awesome if the dungeons themselves change depending on what you've done and what quest you've completed. Yeah, I'll be curious to see if they can actually do that with, um, with what they're doing with those be- buying and renting items, but. Because um, I'm kind of worried, like, how do you know what items you need for a dungeon? Is that That's a good trial, question. trial and error? But, um, but just just knowing that I'll be in a dungeon and I can't rely on the, oh, I need to solve this puzzle. What was the last item I picked up? Like that'll be, yeah, that'll be nice. Because um, I, I also I also was thinking, the dungeons are kind of like Tomb Raider type scenarios because if you're really going in for the treasure or to like unlock something that I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Um Zelda needs trucks is where you're yes, going with that. Yes. Please add trucks. Okay. <laughs> More trucks. Stealth Zelda. Zel- Zelda's attorney. Um <laughs> play as Zelda. That's uh that actually would be interesting. I think playing as Zelda is something I would like to see. Yeah. At least at some point. Not, give me maybe a, not like a full game. Give but. me a Sheik game, man. Like. Yeah, or the Sheik? Yeah. Let um. Sheik shine. That's hard to say. <laughs> and now they're trying to ruin Zelda. So, all right. I think that's it for game pitches. That's it for Night Force. Chat, thanks for participating. Aaron, thanks for hanging out tonight, man. A pleasure. And Night Force will be back next week with a new episode. Check out HorribleNight.com in the meantime for more editorials and live streaming on our Twitch channel. We'll catch you next time.